get our teacher value here, doing the same thing that we saw over in uh, SQL Server, we'll start a transaction, we'll run an update, but we're not gonna commit or roll back our transaction. All right, one row affected, again, within our same transaction scope, we'll query and see new teacher. Now, if you remember back in SQL Server world, when we went to go and do another select and try and get a shared lock on the table, our query was dead in the water. We weren't getting anything. And now in Postgres with the MVCC and the way it's able to intelligently handle uh, reading and writing locking, look, teacher. So you ran that query already? Yes. Wow, okay. Just ran So it. that's what this multi-version concurrency control is. Now, okay, so if I was to think of this as a developer, Postgres looks to be like taking a snapshot of the table or the data or whatever and hoisting it into memory and allowing me to work on it and there's no locking going on. Just taking nothing away from SQL Server, I mean, it is a best-in-class relational engine. And I was really worried going over to Postgres that, you know, it's going to, it's open source, it's probably going to feel hacky. Uh, you know, I probably didn't think it'd be up to snuff. But one of the really cool things or powerful things in SQL Server is this concept of parallelism, parallel queries. And Postgres doesn't have that. So I thought, well, there's probably no way it's gonna be able to scale. Zip. But I mean, that's that's only part of the that's only part of the picture. And the other thing is I thought, the optimizer in SQL Server is one of Microsoft's pride and joys. It, it has so much research into it. It is magically complex. And I was thinking, you know, there's no way, there's no way an open source optimizer can match that, right? right. Oracle and Microsoft, they throw so much money into it. And I, that all was completely shattered. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is opinion of a of a DBA again. I mean, I find that fascinating. You're not just some arm waving developer going, "Oh, Postgres is awesome." You're a DBA. <laughs> no, and the fun thing is yeah. that every aspect of Postgres, from the development side to the administrative side, was like I was just opening up Christmas presents, exploring it. Well, that's cool. And, and to be clear, there's no NVAR card because you don't need it. And nope. dun, 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 drum roll, I'm going to guess that the encoding that Postgres uses by default is, what is it, UTF-8? Yay. We have it. Wow, look at that. So IPv4, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. That's pretty predictable, right? Yeah. So, Yeah, let's see if we can pull this off. So, would handle IPv6. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. How do you write a regular expression for IPv6? It handled them both. <laughs> like the next one we're going to play with. And it's arrays. There's an array data type. And you might look at that and say, well, why would I ever use an array? Well, the answer is when you're trying to do something like Oren and I did with a, uh, his document database, where you have something like a tag. And you don't want to just, you don't want to have a minute to minute, you don't want to have this ceremonial structure just for doing these contextual taggings. Why not just have an array and then you can query on the array. And as you're showing here, it is so very easy to do with Postgres. It's weird because it starts to take on this document database veneer at this point. Have you seen something like this? Okay, wait, so you're doing create table, you're doing a new table, support email, keeps cool, okay, inherits. You're inheriting another, okay, company, you're inheriting company drones. What is going on here? We're gonna run it. We're gonna select from company drones. That looks just like what we expect. So we insert into company drones. And notice we've only inserted into company drones. Now we're gonna query uh, from support drones. Empty, as it should be, right? Okay, well, let's, you know, our company's growing. We're expanding. And we need to add some drone who can provide support. 
this is where you come into play. Oh, goody. Okay. And of course, keeps us cool would be zero. Uh-huh. Thanks, Rob. I'm always here for you. <laughs> so we've done one insert. It shows one row affected. Uh-huh. And if we now look at our support drones table, there you are. That's cool. Yeah. But let's check on our company drones table. I'm in there too. Yeah. This looks like a really nice, clean way of doing this. So uh, let's do it. See how long All it right. takes. So then we'll create questions there we go. and our answers. Uh, cool. As a DBA, do you have any reservations looking at a partitioning scheme like this, or you think, oh, this is neat for you app devs, but this isn't what a serious DBA would do? Do you have any reservations like that? No, uh, partitioning. It's like it's a known, widely used, you know, effective tool. It stood the test of time, and you know, people love it and embrace it. Again, it's it's something you don't want to rush, and you always need to be aware of it. But we can see the results already of, you know, on a five. You know, on a four to five million row table, we're only crawling 1.5 quickly and effectively. And if we go to our uh, query plan, mm -hmm. you know, we're not dealing with that post root table. I mean, all of our data is in post root if we need it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we want to replicate, we could just replicate the entire post root table and get everything on our um, slave. Mm -hmm. But in terms of querying, having this nice physical partition and only hitting just questions when we need it is nice. Thank you.